everything has to start with the team, has to start with the leadership. Even if it's just one person leading themselves, what is it that makes an individual and a team and a group of people what I call extraordinary in a world of ordinary? Because I believe that it's quite simple, not easy, it's quite simple to be extraordinary. And the first place that I want to touch on in this conversation about being extraordinary for the time that we've also got to is the team. And I've just put some images up here because we've got people in offices, we've got bosses, directors, we've got people that work at front desks in businesses, we've got people that never meet other people. Everything's online, but this is all, we've got people that build houses. We have these teams and groups of people and all these teams and groups of people working together, let's face it, you would know this, we're all different and we all, I feel, put on the planet to do different jobs, different roles. Some people want to be musicians. Some people want to build enterprise. Some people want to do accounting. Some people want to build websites. Some people want to write books. Some people want to do nothing. Everyone, whether you're laying the concrete or whether you are on the phone to the person building the house or the building is a customer that pays money to deliver on what it is, whatever it is that we're doing. And everyone, no matter what size, is invariably directly or indirectly affecting that. And I worked for a company once upon a time in Sydney and they were an IT tech company and they were a sales focused organization. Everyone knew that they were in the business of acquiring customers and generating sales revenue. And that's how the business ran. And it was a very, very successful organization. Not all organizations are like that. Some people are, oh, that's not my job and that's the sales people and they're the marketing people, I'm just in accounts. Now, you're gonna see in a moment in more detail, even as a reminder, how we all affect the customer sales experience. So let's keep going. Foundationally, taking full responsibility, no matter what role that we're in, how many times do I think I see it and I, you might see it, where, oh, that's not my job, that's their job, and why do they do this, and da, da. And all I'm gonna say is stop. Stop and have a look and think, where can we take responsibility for ourselves and be an asset? And if you are a boss and a leader, and your team is not performing, or your company's not performing, you might need to have a look and take responsibility as to what needs to change from a leadership perspective. Not a very nice quote, but it says, the fish always rots from the head. No matter how much we deny it, we are the leaders of companies and teams of people. We're the parents, they're our kids. Are we being good parents or are we being really crappy parents? That's it, bottom line. And if you're a great parent or you're a great team member, <laughs> congratulations to you. Take responsibility. The next thing is, what do you want? whether you're an individual business owner or you're a team or a company, what is it that you want? Is it more sales? Is it more customers? Is it better conversions? And being willing to stand back on a Saturday if you have to and put some pen to paper if you've got to do the seven pillars and have a look and go, we are really good at generating leads, but we're really average at conversion. Or we're really good at fulfillment and building the house or the product, but we're really bad at this or whatever it is, really standing back and consistently looking at what it is that we want and deciding how we can do better to get it. That's it. And the focus and all be driving together. Very, very challenging no matter what size business where you've got one division driving that way, you've got one driving that way, you've got one driving that way and then you've got other businesses where they all get that they're on the same path. And one of the things that I'm gonna say here is, and maybe you do this, maybe you don't do this, but whatever size business or company that you're in, whether division or overall, meet every day. And if you're the leader or the owner watching this, meet every day. I know, for some people, of course, Trevor, 
How could we not meet every day? But for some people, oh, we don't have time to meet. Well, if the growth and performance of your organization and company is important to you, you will find time to meet 10 minutes every day to align. What are we doing? Where are we going? What's the problems? Are you okay? Do you need help? No ego, getting the job done, providing customer service, delivering great service, being paid for whatever it is that we do. And I know that that is very Pollyanna and it's never gonna be real to its full extent. But what if the intention and the goal was to at least aim to be that? Could things be better? Could they be better? That is long before we ever talk about sales scripts and customer service and returning phone calls is foundationally, how are you or you and your team showing up? And what needs to be cleaned up or what is going really well? Align, meet, same goal, so focused, same vision. Where are you going? What are you doing? And destination. As a goal, if the destination is more revenue, I've just picked one, very often there's other destinations, but if you want to go from a $10 million organization or a $10,000 organization to a $13 million organization or a 13,000 organization, whatever it is, what is the destination? Because as simple as it sounds, does everyone know the target? Does everyone know where you're going and what it is, no matter what size? Now, I know some people are going to feel a bit uncomfortable about that, or I don't know if I want them to know. Well, that's up to you. But everyone on the same path knowing and also being rewarded in different ways to achieve the goal, rising tide lifts all ships. I'll leave you with that to ponder. And support. Support, support, support. Those people I showed you earlier, they are all people. You're a person, you, whoever you are watching this, owner, team member, whoever, you are a person and no matter who you are, I don't care how strong you are or how powerful you are or how quiet and shy you are, every human being I believe will do better by being supported, being part of a team and understanding that whole process and supporting customers and yourself. Support, that is how we'll grow. That's how we'll continue to move forward well on this planet. There is so much abundance. There is so much wealth. There's so much money. It doesn't have to come from a place of greed and lack. Abundance, support, that's my belief. And the last but not least for this moment, the C factor, the care factor. Going to the mirror and saying, do I care? And if I don't care, do I either leave, change businesses, or look at how I can turn my care factor up? Because I believe a lot of people are a bit asleep. And very often, and I think this is part of this motivational part, is to wake up and have a look and go, where do I need to get my care factor back on to get things moving? Yeah, I'm in this job or I'm in this thing. What do I need to stand back and have a look at to build a stronger foundation? Shall we jump on to the next one? Stay with me. Got some good stuff for you. Let's get into it. But this is a really quick, simple way that we can use to get clear on everyone's role and how everyone can work together for the time that we have. And it's a beautiful process. And you may know the DISC profile, but what I really love about it, it helps to bring real simple clarity to everyone's role and how they impact each other and how we can be better if we want to create change, if we want to improve productivity, if we want to improve performance, if we want to improve customer acquisition sales, how can we work together as a team? And also by knowing this, you can understand other people better and you're not going to go crazy when, they, when you say, why do they always do that? Why do they act like that? Why do you act like you? It's because we're all built in certain ways. So let's have a look at it. The leader. You might be the leader. You might be a one person leader. Currently for me, in my business, I'm the leader. I'm the director, me. I have a couple of people that help me here and there, but I'm my CEO of my business. And while I'm probably not in this profile, I'm actually, it's not that I'm probably, I know I'm not, 
I don't have a strong director type personality. I do have elements, but we'll talk more about that and for you in a moment. But the, the director, let's look at the director's good and the challenge to growth. Generally, the leader, the business owner, the CEO, very often, they're, they're direct, they're firm, they're results driven, they're strong willed, they're great visionaries, they'll, they'll build industry and factory or they'll just go start business. They don't sleep, they're success and status driven, um, they very often like power and money. And these are great things that we need. We need industrious drivers, but the challenges with industrious drivers is they can be impatient, the less evolved can be very self-serving, they can be controlling, and they can very often be poor communicators and very often don't even like people. They just wanna drive, 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 direct, direct, direct. And then we have evolved leaders. Who are this person that they understand what it takes to work with other people? So I'm not pigeonholing anyone, but we've got the director. Then we've got the influencer. Um, I have a lot of influencer traits in me and I have a little bit of director, um, but enthusiastic, <laughs> who would have thought, right? Loves to take action, encouraging, talkative, focus on achieving goals, loves to socialize, connect with people, praise people. My blocks to growth can be, I can be impulsive. Sometimes can be challenged with completion, but I work really hard on that because I know how important completion is. And I've really worked on being that person as I talked about earlier, is good at completing. <laughs> good at completing, right? Almost killed me, but I partly did it to complete. Can be disorganized, not so much me, but some can, uh, and can be emotional. I'm gonna put my hand up, I can be emotional. So let's say we've got a lion, we've got an eagle, just, just have some fun. And then we've got the conservative or the accounts or the, um, the accounts, the administration. I do find a lot of people in marketing are actually conservatives. You might think they're influencers, but very often people in marketing, anyway, don't mean, I'll get back on track. The supporter, the loving, caring, assistant, um, beauty person who works and makes people look really nice. They're supportive, they're stable, they're caring, they're sensitive, they're patient. They love stability. They love to be praised and loved. They love connection and communication and they risks to growth can be, oh, what's the risks? That could be risky. They put others first. They don't like confrontation and they don't like letting people down and they can struggle with self-worth. The pussycat, the pussycat, which very often can be team leaders, can be the people that do the delivery and the production and the fulfillment and customer service. Again, there's always variables. I'm not saying this is set in stone as I'm sure you can appreciate, but people that are building the back end IT and just loving the customer service experience, you go and tell them, oh, can you just go and ring all those companies and see if we can get a meeting? They're gonna have a heart attack. They're not built that way. You go and get the accountant and say, um, can you just ring XYZ and we can just see if we can offer them some other products and services? We'll have a heart attack. So we're not saying we can't train these people, we can, but me trying to sit me in the office doing accounts all day, I'll put my gun into my head excuse me, don't mean to be so graphic. I had a mortgage finance business for nine years. I did well. When I was with clients and customers, in my flow, back, process, data, audits, <laughs> compliance, it just killed me, killed me. So what can we do as an organization, no matter what size, to better understand how each person works together but also affects the customer sales experience. Directors, owners, leaders, you grumpy, you're self-serving, you're greedy, you're gonna affect your bottom line. You gotta look at that. If you're already, but if you're abundant and open and service orientated and see the bigger picture, your business is gonna thrive. You're bossy, everyone around, you think that people are motivated by control and, and put down, you're old school, old school. I'm being straight. You want to have people shine, 
give them support and understanding and train them, help them be their best, understand where each of their roles are and respect to the di director with the other styles, know who that person is as a person and respect them for who they are and what their role is and what your role is. Accounts and HR and marketing. If you can work better with sales or understand how to embrace the sales conversion element of your part of your business and your role, conversion can be so much better. I had someone who's a very C-style contact me from a company. I attended one of their webinars. I knew he was a he C, a high C-style marketer, digital marketer, sent me an email saying, are you still open for more clients? Now, they're doing a lot better than I am. I know the company. They do a lot of marketing and I see how much they're putting out there. But if that is their conversion strategy, unless, you know, people show up and say, where do I sign up? My God, if they got that guy to go do what he does well and got someone else to make the call and have the meeting. Hi, you attended our webinar. Just wanted to check in, see if and how we might be able to be a service to you. Let's have a chat, see where you're at, see what we can do.